Hello, my name is Corbett Stone and I'm coming to you from Florence, South Carolina, from the Florence Baptist Temple. And it is my honor and privilege to speak to you today. I was asked to, uh, by Brother Ben Burks, to uh, talk with you a little bit about something that is very important to me and has been very beneficial to our chapter here. And that is talking about the idea or the concept of doubling your Sunday morning RU class. Doubling your RU Sunday morning class. Um, Sunday morning class is so important to the growth of your local chapter. Uh, we have found uh, over the years that when students participate in the Sunday morning class as well as the Friday night class, that their percentage of completing the program, graduating and doing well, goes up exponentially. And so uh, we really make a big deal about our Sunday morning class. And so it leads you to the question of why is that Sunday morning class so important to the growth of your students? I believe there are three reasons. I think first, I think it connects them to your chapter. Uh, there's an extra level of commitment when a student goes from being a Friday night only attender to regularly attending the Sunday morning class. There is more buy-in. Uh, there is more involvement. Uh, there are relationships that reach a different level. And they just become more a part of your local chapter when they're here on Sunday mornings as well as Friday night. So first, it helps your it helps them connect them to your chapter. Secondly, I think it's important that it connects them to your church. Uh, coming back on Sunday morning, uh, seeing the Sunday morning crowd that comes to worship there, that is the church body, meeting them, being around them, developing relationships with them, worshiping with them as we get them to attend worship services with us is one of their challenges. And it just connects them to the body of the church. And when they're connected to the body of the church, um, they, they become more like you and more, more assimilated into your group. Thirdly, I think it's important that it connects the student to the local pastor. When they have a chance to come and to see him, to hear him preach, to possibly meet him, uh, to uh, begin to submit themselves to his leadership and his pulpit ministry, it makes a huge difference. They, all of a sudden they can connect uh, the leader of the church and the church body that they are uh, attending with, and it just makes a huge difference. For, so for those three reasons, I think it's so important for the students to be connected to the chapter, to the church, and to the pastor. Now, the next question is, is how does your chapter execute the Sunday morning class? So we say it's important, the Sunday morning class is so important for the students' growth to connect them to the chapter, to the church, and to the pastor. How, how will you execute your Sunday morning class? And I certainly mean no disrespect to any chapters that um, are currently having a uh, Sunday morning class and maybe you uh, follow a certain pattern. And so I mean no harm here, but we've had our, ch our local chapter here for about 16 years. And over the years, talking with other chapters from across the country, uh, I have found it consistent that chapters that make the Sunday morning class special, they make it important, tend to do much better. And so what I mean by that is that I hope that we don't treat our Sunday morning class just like every other Sunday school class that meets on the church property that morning. Certainly, again, no disrespect to uh, traditional Sunday school classes that, uh, that do a traditional Bible study, uh, traditional fellowship. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. But we have to understand and appreciate that our students are coming to us specifically because they're looking for help with their struggle with addiction. And so if we have a Friday night class that really meets that need and then tell them, oh yeah, we want you to come back on Sunday. And then just, it feels like, well, you just stuck them in a Sunday school class. 
I believe immediately they're going to lose interest, that they're not going to value that class, that they're going to think that uh, you as a chapter have uh, missed the boat on what they're coming for. And so I hope that you um, answer some very important questions about how you execute that Sunday morning class. And so the first one is, is let's make sure it's not just another Sunday morning class. Again, no disrespect to the, uh, the structure of a traditional Sunday school class, but it needs to be specifically um, created and implemented and practiced for those who struggle with addiction. Secondly, how is it structured? Who is leading that class? Who's teaching in that class? Who, who are the students uh, connecting with and talking with during that class? I think it's so important that we use our, our program structure, that would be i.e. our group leaders, helpers, and that we would use that very same structure uh, to connect with them on Sundays. And so I would encourage you to uh, have your group leaders and helpers to be a part of that Sunday morning class. Now I'll be uh, very quick to, uh, to recognize that over the years when we have had um, members of our church come over and to take a leadership position, uh, they've come over with the understanding that they already had a Sunday school class on Sundays that they were teaching, but they wanted to come and help on Friday nights. And so uh, we certainly welcomed their help if they could, if they could fit in, if they could uh, live up to all the expectations and all the requirements. We certainly wanted to give them an opportunity to get involved. And some of those had already taught a Sunday school class or already heavily involved in another Sunday school class. And so we certainly make allowances for that. We don't want to uh, pull them away from a, a class or a ministry that they were already involved in. But with a group leader and helper, there ought to be enough leadership between the two of those that at least one of those can be present on Sunday morning on a regular basis. And so I think that's so important that we have that very same structure. Not only the structure of the leadership team, uh, but the structure that we use on Friday nights with the three talks. I think that's so very important because I believe it's what makes the Are You Sunday Morning class relevant to the student, that it meets their need, uh, that it, um, it is something that they are generally interested in. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail a little bit later. The third question is, is what is the subject matter? What are you going to teach in that Sunday morning class? And um, I know that some of you there may be your Sunday school superintendent and are very skilled and able to write wonderful Sunday school lessons, uh, Bible studies, and, uh, and those certainly have their place. But again, in an RU class, I think it's important that we, we really address the struggle that, those, that these students have. And so I recommend the material to be one of our RU topical books. There are many of them. Um, for example, um, Tall Law, Umbrella Fella, um, Codependency, Recovery Without Relapse. I'm just starting that myself. Uh, the Recovery Without, Recovery Without Relapse I started this past Sunday. But there's so many good topical books that will really connect and resonate with your students. And I would encourage you to use uh, those RU topical books as your subject matter, as your curriculum for those classes. The next question is, is where do you meet? And uh, this is important because you want to make sure that you choose a space that is uh, easily findable as, as your students come in on Sunday morning. Uh, they may not be as familiar with your church buildings as your church members are. So it needs to be somewhere that they could access easily, that they could find their way. Uh, it'd be great if you could uh, uh, find a, a passageway that would lead past the door where there's a door greeter so that when they come late that uh, and they say, hey, I've showed up, I'm showing up for the RU class, that that, lead, that that greeter could walk them to class or to help them find their way. But it's important to, to choose a good location. Um, we're filming this today from actually our location that we, we have for our Sunday morning class. It's called our chapel. 
It's one of our biggest, one of our best rooms on the entire property. And I'm, I'm so, um, so thankful that our pastor thinks so much of this ministry that he put our Sunday morning class in one of the best rooms on the property because he recognizes the importance of having a good central location and a good place uh, for our students to come and to participate on Sunday mornings. And so I would encourage you to really think about uh, where you meet. Um, interestingly, when we first started RU uh, 16 years ago, when we had our Sunday morning class, we when we first got started, we only had about three or four students coming, obviously. And um, our first location wasn't near as nice as this one is here today. Our very first location was actually at our Christian school in uh, one of our teacher's lounges. And so uh, there was a couple of couches in there. There was a noisy soda vending machine in there. And uh, it certainly was a humble beginning. And if I had it to do over again, um, even if we had to choose a smaller room, I think I'd have chose a different location. It just wasn't good. It wasn't convenient for visitors to come to. And so I think that's important to stop and to consider in choosing your location. Where do you meet? And then the last question in this sec section would be, who leads the class? Who leads the class? And I think it's important that our director, or at the very least, our assistant director uh, lead that class. Um, I know that uh, the duties around the church oftentimes are divided up and that you have to be creative sometimes in making sure that everything is, everything is covered and that it receives its proper leadership. But uh, I think it's so important that um, you have one of the main f figures of leadership present there on Sunday mornings, again, to uh, give credibility to that class and to really uh, put the emphasis on it that it, it deserves and that it needs in order to grow. And so I would encourage you to consider a, your director or your assistant director to lead that Sunday morning class. And then next it leads us to the next question, which would be, since Friday night is such an incredible tool to reach the addicted, since Friday night is such an incredible tool to reach the addicted, how will our Sunday morning class compare to it? Now, I start out by saying that is our Friday night class is, um, is really a, uh, a stroke of genius, uh, to, to give Steve Currington some credit. Uh, I remember hearing him explain uh, how he came to the decision of choosing Friday night as when to have his class. And when you think about Friday night or Fridays being the end of the work week, so many of our uh, folks that struggle with addiction are blue collar workers, and you come to the end of a long work week, and uh, every two weeks, it's most likely a payday, if not every week. And so that is the day, and oftentimes blue collar workers uh, work a, an abbreviated schedule on Friday, usually a half a day on Friday. And so if they have a struggle with going and using life dominating substances, alcohol, drugs, uh, whatever their addiction may be, if they have opportune time and they have uh, resources to make that happen, it's very likely that they're gonna engage in that bad behavior. They're gonna engage in that addiction. But if they have a, a good healthy alternative, rather than uh, doing what they've always done, which is to take their, their money, their paycheck, and to go blow it on their addiction, if they say, you know, I'm supposed to be at that class tonight at seven o'clock, and it changes, changes or alters uh, their schedule, their direction. And they come to this finite class and rather than going out and spending all of their money and making some huge mistakes and oftentimes being uh, consequences for that, waiting for them that night or the next day or the, or the following work week, and they make that good choice, that good decision, and they get the good result of still having their money at the end of the weekend, not waking up in jail not having a spouse that's upset or, or furious with them because they've been gone all weekend. It just makes a huge difference. And so Friday night is such an incredible tool. I think it's important that we take advantage of some of the strengths of Friday night. And some of the strengths of Friday night is something I mentioned earlier, 
It's the structure. And I, I mentioned the group leader and helper, but let's not forget the structure of the three talks. Talk, talk, talk. First, we talk to God in prayer and testimony. Second, we talk to each other in challenge groups. And third or finally, God speaks to us or talks to us through the message. And once again, something that is so vitally important that's so uh, incredibly effective with our students is for us to train them that we need to talk to God and God needs to talk to us. And to uh, take that very same structure as we teach them to pray to the Lord every Friday night. We teach them it's important to pray. We pray corporately together as we pray through those prayer cards during talk one. We teach them that it's so important that we testify of God's goodness, of the victory and freedom that he's brought in our life. And so we train them by uh, having that testimony time every Friday night. And then we have that group council time where they meet with their group leaders and helpers in a small group and they get counsel and they get encouragement, they get ministry, they get, incur they get accountability. And then in talk three, God speaks through them through a, a Bible message. Uh, the word of God teaches them the truth and that truth makes them free. It's important that we take that very same structure and that we take advantage of it on Friday night. And once again, not just having a Sunday morning Sunday school class for the RU students who we've talked into coming to church, but having a class that really is designed and structured to help them where they struggle. And so I think it's important that we take advantage of that very same structure that we get the benefit on, of on Friday nights and to use it on Sunday mornings. And so how has the how has the material how has the material made a difference in students lives on friday night well as you know we teach through the uh, nevertheless i live student uh, textbook and student guide and so we teach through these 10 chapters these 10 chapters that teach about salvation and then about sanctification about discipleship and we lead them through I think it's important that, it, once again, that we use the RU uh, materials, those topical books, as the subject matter to help them deal with the struggles in life, to deal with codependency issues, to deal with um, recidivism rate, to deal with those things that they need help for. And so we want to use the structure and we want to use the materials on Sunday morning. Now, if we do that, if we structure the class the same way it is on Friday night using the three talks and we use some of the same good materials on Sunday morning, how will we, how will we encourage those students to begin to get connected and to grow? Well, I think it's important that we factor in some uh, fellowship time, whether that's on the front end or the back end of the class. Uh, before coronavirus, our Sunday, our RU Sunday class met before worship service, and so we tried to do some fellowship on the front end of the class. Well, since coronavirus, we are now having our Sunday morning RU class after our worship hour, and so now we have a lot more time on the back end. But whether it's on the front end or the back end, I think it's important that we structure at least a 10, 10 minute time frame where we can have our group leaders and helpers uh, just have a time to sit and to talk. Uh, we've got enough structured things for them to do for the hour, hour and 10. I don't know how long you have for your Sunday morning class. We have enough structured time. Important to have that non-structured time as well as the structured time. And so we have to pick the right spot. We have to have the right structure, the right material, we have to have uh, the opportunity for fellowship. And then we have to have uh, a, a, a space that will allow them to meet together in groups. Because remember, we're going to use the very same format that we use on Friday night. So on Friday nights, we use the talk, talk, talk format. First, we talk to God through prayer and testimony. Second, we talk to each other in challenge groups. And third or finally, God speaks to us through the message. And I, I'm suggesting that we use that very same structure that we use the three talks on Sunday morning. And so 
that's exactly what we do after our students come in and we uh, get everybody uh, in together and have a little bit of fellowship. We break our students up into their talk to groups. Now, before coronavirus, uh, we had uh, tables that we had our group sit around and that was the way to kind of bring them together, to give them a workspace, if you will, uh, but to really connect them. That table connects them because they sit looking at each other and within very close proximity. Well, since the coronavirus, obviously we've had to make some adjustments on that, but we're still encouraging our students to sit together. And so there's no table, uh, but we're encouraging them to sit kind of in a semicircle pattern and to sit uh, close enough that there can be at least a connection there where they can connect with their eyes, where they can connect with their, uh, their conversation. And so we encourage our students to sit together with their group leader, with their helper as a group. And I think that's so important. So they come in and they sit down as a group and then we start our program and we get right into talk one. We talk to God in prayer and testimony. And so the prayer cards are out already on their chair. And so we encourage them to go ahead and complete that prayer card and to hold it up and our men collect it. And our assistant director comes and leads us in prayer. And then our other assistant director uh, leads in testimony time and walks around the room and gives as many students who feel comfortable and want to share a testimony give them that opportunity to share testimony. And once we complete talk one, we make the transition, but listen, we invert talk two and talk three. So we go from talk one to talk three. We go to the time where God talks to us to the message, the time where I'm gonna teach through uh, that topical lesson. As I said earlier, uh, we just started recovery without relapse this past week. And so, I will teach that lesson for about 25, 30 minutes, depending on how much time you have for your RU class. And I teach talk three and I lead up to talk two. Now, the reason behind that is because on Sunday mornings, um, there's a big difference from Friday nights. On Friday nights, we pretty much have run of the property. We're the only, uh, we're the only activity going on on the church property for the most part, most weeks. And so we have ample time. We have uh, two and a half hours where we can have the three talks. We have plenty of space. Uh, we can uh, take our time between the talks, have a, a transitional time between, between the talks. Uh, we can get our students to the classrooms that we have around our building. And um, it's just enough time and enough space to do talk one, talk two, and talk three. Well, on Sunday mornings, we have to cut everything in half. Rather than having three 40-minute segments, we have to get everything done in three 20-minute segments, and we don't have any time to spare for transition. And so that's what, that's what led us to the place where we decided, you know what? It makes more sense, and it's a better flow on Sunday mornings to do talk three first, to teach the lesson, and then immediately transition to talk two, where we talk to one another in our council groups, and to have three discussion questions uh, from the, the lesson that was given that day. Now, whether it's three or whether it's five or whether it's two, that, that's immaterial. But to give them the opportunity to discuss the, the lesson that was taught that morning. You say, well, why don't you do challenges? Well, because we do challenges on Friday night. Uh, Friday night is the night that we encourage our students to work on their challenge books and to bring those challenges in and to go over those and then to give them awards for what they've completed. And I don't believe that you can do that on Friday and Sunday. I, I know I don't have the administrative staff or the time to do that on Sunday mornings. And so we felt it would be better to teach the topical lesson on Sunday morning in the second space and then in the third space have talk two where you have a round table or without a table, have a round discussion about the lesson that was taught that day. And so we found it to be very, um, um, very successful, a very productive use of the time. We've shared this with several other chapters uh, around the country and I've uh, been told that some of them have uh, tried it and have liked it, but I would encourage you to at least consider it um, and to see if it works for your chapter, see if it works for your students and your leadership team. And I would encourage you to, um, 
to once again, make sure that that Sunday morning class is a place where students can come and they can develop relationships, good and healthy relationships with their group leader and their group helper. I think that is so important. They, they have relationships oftentimes that aren't very good, that aren't very healthy, that aren't very supportive, that actually are detrimental. And I think it's important that they have the time and the space to develop those relationships. And we kind of put even a bigger emphasis on that on Sunday mornings, even than on Friday nights. Because after Friday night, we've been here for two and a half, two hours, two hours, 45 minutes. And it's hard to get a lot of students to stay for a long time after that uh, extended class. But we are, we found that we can actually get them to stay just a little bit longer on Sunday mornings because we've had a shorter class and they don't mind spending that extra time in fellowship. And so take the opportunity to encourage the development of relationships between leaders and students. And also take the opportunity to have some special days on Sunday. I, I promise you, your pastor will appreciate it. Uh, certainly working with the church calendar, not to, um, uh, to have a promotion that would supersede your church-wide promotion, but have some special Sundays. Uh, this past Sunday, it was election day, and so we had uh, I Vote for Jesus Day, and we had uh, refreshments for our students. We had uh, Bojangles biscuits and coffee, and we encouraged them to come early and to just have a, a special time of fellowship. Um, our next uh, Sunday morning activity we've got planned will be uh, on Valentine's Day 2021. That Valentine's Day falls on Sunday. And so we're going to have a potluck dinner and we're going to encourage our students to bring a, a food item from home and then we'll get together after class is over in our dining hall and we'll enjoy an extended fellowship time there for lunch. And so just look for opportunities throughout the year to have those special events and uh, again, once again, to help develop relationships among your students. But most importantly, for your Sunday morning class, look for the opportunities and to focus on the opportunities to make the RU Sunday, Sunday class a big deal. Uh, don't treat it like just an add-on class. Don't treat it like, well, we'll figure out, you know, where to put you guys if you come on Sunday mornings. Uh, don't stick them in a, in a cramped room um, in an obscure place. Uh, put a lot of thought, a lot of effort into it. Put them in a place where they like to come and they like to participate and uh, create an environment that is very welcoming and enjoyable and create a structure uh, for your Sunday morning class that is productive for the use of a smaller length of time. And, uh, and I believe if you'll do that, I believe that you'll see your students grow. I believe you'll see more graduates and I believe that you'll see uh, men and women that are uh, delivered and set free from the bondage of addiction. And so I hope this is an encouragement to you and I wish you a good day.